I want to extend a warm welcome to you today. Everyone is welcome here. This community is a safe place where we support each other in the sacred task of becoming, celebrate the transcending mystery of life, and rely on the transforming power of love. The buff theme of the month is beloved community. Today, we are having an in-gathering ceremony to welcome those who have recently started attending. When the service is over, we will have our breakout rooms and circle talk. Please stick around for those if you can. You are important to the life of this beloved community. What you think and say is important to us all. Now let's turn to our announcements, which are printed at the bottom of your OOS, or your bulletin. Uh, are there any additions or corrections that need to be made? Uh, uh, Julie. Uh, Tuesday night on WTTW channel 11, if you can get it, Rise Up, Songs of the Women's Movement will be on. I saw it last year. It's, it's just wonderful. Thank you, Julie. Other uh, announcements that need to be corrected are, uh, are additions. This is Lisa. Uh, yesterday, um, Catherine, Beth, and I attended a pretty much all day anti-racism, uh, dismantling white supremacy workshop uh, from the UUA. It was fabulous. And we have, um, uh, we attended some different sessions and we plan to get together and talk about um, what we learned. Um, and I'm inviting anyone who's interested in beginning an anti-racism ministry with um, Barry and UU Fellowship to uh, attend um, and, and listen and begin to brainstorm about what that might possibly look for our fellowship. Also, I know from our five-year planning meetings that there has been um, uh, concern about political talk during service and beyond. And uh, so I am curating a set of articles to help us have uh, better discussions um, or um, more appropriately include um, uh, politics in our services. And if you would like to join me in uh, learning more about that and um, coordinating our how we proceed, uh, let me know. Thank you. Other announcements? They just need to step in. Uh, this is Joanne. And I just want to let everyone know that we were uh, we had to upgrade our service that we use for sending out the order of service and the buff announced to everyone. It's called Mail Poet. The new version is significantly different than the old version. And unfortunately, as part of the change, I know a lot of you have been either not receiving your emails or they're going into your junk or spam folder. Um, some links might not be working. Please um, always check your junk and spam folder if you don't get something, because I know a lot of the, the uh, order of service emails are going to my spam folder too. Please check that. And if you still can't find it, please email or call me. Um, as long as I know it's a problem, I can do some research because I would like everyone to be able to receive their email. So just please let me know. And I apologize for anyone who's been having problems with that. Others? Uh, yes, um, uh, Larry Feldman, for his birthday, uh, put on his Facebook page that he would love gifts uh, as donations to Calling All Colors. Excellent. Others? If not, let's- Jim, uh, Christina, Christina has raised her hand. Jim. Oh, uh, I'm sorry, Christina, go ahead. All good. We were right on the right on before the finish line. So we just wanted to do another plug for uh, the ghost light auditions that are coming up soon. Uh, specifically, if you're interested in auditioning for small mouth sounds, which less is directing, uh, or if you're interested in auditioning for uh, much ado about nothing, which I'm directing, uh, I am not required. Do you want to talk about what? you're requiring for auditions to be prepped? Yeah, if you're interested, I think the best thing to do is just go to the Ghost Light website and they have information there for the character breakdown and then also for, you know, what to bring to the audition. But it's simple. Um, just, you know, if if you're auditioning, you, you probably know to bring a monologue of some kind, but if you don't have one, that's okay too. We'll work with you. 
Thank you, Christina and Les. Others? If not, let's, uh, let's go to our first hymn. pictures and uh, for the background? Joanne. Joanne. And, and Nico. And Nico. Okay, cool. All very good pictures, you two. Uh, now, uh, Leah McCoskey and Zelda will light our chalice. Good morning. Good morning. Zelda and I are here to celebrate our beloved community with you, and we are really honored to be lighting the chalice this morning. So to start, Zelda is going to kick us off. Can you read the words? Abundance Chalice Lighting. We light our chalice this morning, grateful for the love that we experience, experience in this beloved community. May the flame light the way for all who see such abundance. Excellent, thank you, Zelda and Leah. I like that chalice. That's a, that's a kind of chalice you need if you really want to stay safe and not get burned. Uh, next, let's uh, when the words appear on the screen, let's read our affirmation together. Love is the spirit of this church, and service is its law. This is our great covenant to dwell together in peace, to seek the truth in love, and to help one another. Uh, let's uh, go on now to our uh, uh, offering, and Martin will project. Let's read these words together. This fellowship is the community of ourselves. Its resources are our resources. Its wealth is what we share. As we contribute to the life of this community, we affirm our lives within it. And now, what wondrous love is this by Harvey Johnson? 
and Candace Amler. What wondrous love is this, O oh my soul, O oh my soul? What wondrous love is this, O oh my soul? What wondrous love is this that brings my heart such bliss and takes away the pain of my soul, of my soul? and takes away the pain of my soul. When I was sinking down, sinking down, sinking down, when I was sinking down, sinking down, when I was sinking down beneath my sorrow's ground, friends to me gathered round oh my soul oh my soul friends to me gathered round oh my soul to love and to our friends i will sing i will sing to love and to all friends i will sing to love and to all friends who pain and sorrow mend with thanks unto the end i will sing i will sing with thanks unto the end i will sing Wow, thank you, Harvey and Candace, for that. And thank you, whoever with the videography, uh, videographer on that one. Who did the videography on that? The, the Martin? Oh, that's me. Yeah. <laughs> oh, well, very good, Martin. Uh, you get an A for today. And uh, now let's uh, move to uh, our in gathering ceremony. And uh, we will begin, I will begin by. Uh, actually, I think we have uh, some, uh, yes, there we have it. We have the uh, visuals coming up. And uh, uh, I will begin by reading uh, our with an introduction. This morning, we are honored to welcome into our fellowship friends who have found our religious community meaningful, nurturing, and challenging, and have decided to become members. I'm Lisa Fuller, and I am a member of our Buff member caring team. And it is my honor to introduce folks who last year informed us of their interest in becoming members of Berrien Unitarian Universalist Fellowship. In person, we would invite these folks to come to the front with us and sign our membership book. But in these virtual times, things are different. So we want to welcome Candace, Jim, Clark, Nancy, Bridget, Oren, Silas, Leah, Eric, Michelle, Katie, Kim, and Vicki. And today, before we begin the remainder of our in-gathering service, our in-gathering ceremony, is there anyone else attending today who feels moved to become a member of this fellowship? So Martin, would you please advance to the next slide? Thank you. And Jim, back to you. New members, by becoming a member of a Unitarian Universalist congregation, you accept responsibility for the welfare and extension of liberal religion. You affirm the principles and purposes of Unitarian Universalism. You bring to this fellowship your share of talent, energy, conviction, and financial support knowing that your community will prosper 
as you invest yourselves in it. And the I, next invite, I invite our, our new members to unmute at this time and read in unison this new member covenant. We at Buff do not speak a lot about covenant. Um, a covenant is an agreement about how we will be with each other. And we invite our new members to read this covenant in, un in unison, and then the congregation will respond with a covenant of their own. I come as a seeker searching for affirmation and a fuller sense of belonging. I covenant to remain true to the spirit of love that flows through this congregation, to the principles of faith that are honored here and in the dedication of those. I can't read of it. Of those, those who, who have, have come, come before, before me, I seek, seek your welcome as I join, join you in this faith. Thank you, new members. And the congregational response. I invite folks to read along with me. New members, new members we welcome, welcome you. you. As, as once we were welcomed ourselves, we seek to be all and inclusive, respecting your inherent dignity your ideas and your vision. We seek to be supported not only when you reach out to us, but also when you need us to reach out to you. In return, we ask that our humanity will not always live up to our ideals. We we fall short. We invite you to stay in relationship with us and help us fully realize the spirit of love. The spirit of love. Thank you, congregation. I love the echo of mm -hmm. those words yeah. as everyone spoke together. Yeah. Yeah. Remember to hold this covenant close and welcome new members. Thank you. And welcome and thank you, uh, Lisa and uh, Joanne for uh, creating this lovel lovely ceremony for us and the very helpful slides also. I think we have some uh, new words from Beth now. Beth, uh, oh yes, Beth, I forgot. Beth, are you going to speak to us? Yes, hello. <laughs> On behalf of Buff Fellowship, it's my pleasure to extend a warm welcome to all of our new members. This is an exciting time to join our fellowship because we are in a time of growth. Despite the shutdowns of the past year, and we are in the process of creating a five-year new plan. And some of the goals that we are discussing cover all aspects of Buff, such as finding new ways to partner with community organizations, to grow in numbers while keeping the caring and nurturing atmosphere we have held as a small fellowship, to provide our members and friends a variety of programs to grow spiritually and mentally, to use our space indoors and out in innovative and environmentally friendly ways, to keep and grow our paid employee positions, to take and apply to the future some of the lessons of the past year. All Buff members and friends will soon receive a survey asking for your help prioritizing opportunities that we can pursue over the next five years. And please take the time to complete this survey. All congregants, please join me in reading the words on the screen to formally welcome and commit to supporting the new members of our beloved community, which we may have just done. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we did. Thank you, Beth. Beth is our pre board president, in case you were wondering, and th thank you for all she does. It's uh, uh, Beth uh, has wears many hats. She's the mom. She's uh, uh, works, and uh, also is our president. So we appreciate uh, uh, what she has done for us, and continues to do. 
And now Lisa Fuller will talk about something we don't normally talk about in Unitarian Universalist congregations, evangelism. Lisa. Good morning, everyone. I am a UU evangelist. I can't stop talking about the good news of UU and Varian UU Fellowship. Not only is the work that we do usually my main point of conversation, I also started a targeted postcard campaign to let people know that we're here. I designed a buff postcard and with buff board approval, I send it to addresses where I see humanitarian signage. Full disclosure, I also approach cars that have principal supporting bumper stickers and pass cards out to people wearing justice speaking shirts or masks or buttons. I am a UU evangelist. I was largely unchurched as a young person. In 1997, I decided to look for a local church community and was directed to Buff. I knew right away after visiting that I had found my religious home. Everything about Buff resonated deeply with me and I got busy helping out wherever I could. Then in 2014, we were at risk of losing Buff. Voting membership was down to just 12 people and attendance at our Sunday services was really, really poor. There is a Ubuntu saying, I am because we are. I feel that way about you, you, Buff, and our Buff community. I am because we are. So I could not imagine my life without Buff. So I called some friends who'd fallen away and asked for their help to save the fellowship. In 2015, a group spent hours and hours in workshops, identifying our passions, our strengths, rewriting our mission statement, and creating our first five-year strategic plan. Then, from 2016 until 2020, with a better understanding of who we were, where we wanted to be and how we wanted to get there, we grew. And now, not only have we survived, we have thrived. Our worship experiences are much richer and we've increased our social and environmental justice outreach. When I say I'm a UU evangelist, I don't mean that I try to proselytize or convince others to become UU. I just want them to know that UU exists. And I want them to know that Buff is right here, right in our community, ready to support their need for community, their desire to do justice work, and their search for spiritual meaning. UU minister Jennifer Lynn Dalton once warned, if UUs are not fully present and fully engaged in the world with their minds, their hearts, their hands, and I would add their voices, the good news of Unitarian Universalism will die. People who could have been both physically and spiritually fed by this faith will be left alone because they never knew that UU even existed. Each week after sharing our joys and concerns, we hold space in our hearts for the joys and concerns that remain unsaid, and most importantly, for those without a community within which to share. That's why I want you to be a UU evangelist with me so that we don't leave anyone alone for never having known of our UU faith or of Bob. When it feels right, simply say, hey, I'd like to share with you something that our fellowship is doing. I think it might interest you. And in the meantime, let me know where you see humanitarian signing. Black Lives Matter, Love is Love, uh, climate strike for school, school climate, no, school, school strike for climate justice mm -hmm. or the like. 
email the addresses of those homes to postcards at barionuu.org, barionuu.org. And I will send a buff postcard to the caring neighbors at that address and let them know that we are here. Thank you, Lisa. Lovely, very lovely. And now uh, Joan Guilfoyle has a special reading for us. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. So my journey into joining this particular beloved community of Barry and Yu Yu Fellowship uh, began for me with an accident, with a sign. Uh, having moved to Bridgman to my family home in June of 2016 to explore retiring here, I, one day I found myself driving north using GPS going somewhere on a road called Lincoln. And I saw this huge orange sign that said you, you, as I kind of dashed by it. Now, orange is definitely not my color, but I had long ago left the Catholic faith and then the Baha'i faith and moved in and among, I can name four you, you churches in the Twin Cities of Minnesota and two in Washington, DC, where I had friends, I knew people, I did some RE programming for them and I off and on attended. But that orange sign telling me that there were UUs in Southwest Michigan, um, that was news. So the first Sunday service that I went to after that, I couldn't help but chuckle and then kind of grimace uh, at a film clip that was being shown that day uh, about the wild horse and burrow problem out West an environmental issue of huge significance, uh, particularly out there. It was a very strange occurrence for me to have that be in the service because four of my six years in Washington, DC, I had been head of that program. So I had seen hundreds, if not thousands of these animals out on the range and dealt with <laughs> issues with that. But it was so strange to walk into a place where I'd never been before, didn't know anybody and they're showing my program on the screen, it was just, I thought, is this a sign? So on my second or third visit, uh, someone I discovered had handwritten a name tag for me. I found a name tag for me among the name tags. Um, and you might call that a small little gesture, but to me, it was huge. It told me that someone there felt that I belonged. So I started to think maybe I do. So was that a sign too? So almost two years to the date of moving here, and it's a true story. <laughs> I spontaneously stood up during the annual meeting, <laughs> my first annual meeting and said, I wanna be a member. Something just hit me that at Buff, I can truly belong. Excuse me. <laughs> and then I started meeting the people I kind of started sitting next to the same people. June was one of the people I was attracted to getting to know. Um, I noticed those tapestries on the wall that said Gloria W. Who's Gloria W? I got to know other people through the coffee and the pies that we'd have after service. And I know some of you have never had a service there. So you're gonna get to do that at some point. You know, when you join a new group, you're not sure where you're gonna connect, who you're gonna have you know, kinship with. Um, but one person that has stood out to me, particularly this last year of COVID, is someone whose birthday we just had a little birthday song for. And I want to tell you a little story about her. I was one day in the bar, the Italian bar and restaurant on Main Street with a friend having happy hour. And I, it was empty. It was very empty, like 4.30 or something. And I looked up at the bar and I saw this kind of short woman with gray bobbed hair. And she kind of looked familiar from behind talking to the barkeep. And I called out Gloria because I was not used to running into people that I knew around here. I didn't know that many people, but it was her. And she was out in the world connecting with other people, in this case, raising money for Calling All Colors. And I learned how this one buff person was out there in the world as I know many others of this beloved community do, showing who we are, caring. 
I think you know some things about Gloria, but let me just run through them <laughs> a little bit for you to celebrate her birthday and her presence in our community. Just last uh, Thursday night, she got a huge award from the Bering County Democratic Party, which maybe she wants to go get. I don't know if you want to go get it, Gloria. It's really gorgeous. Okay. Um, in honor. I'm get it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> It's beautiful. In honor of her years of activism, her um, calling all colors, all God's children choir, the race relations council, the out center, too many things to mention. She was on her hands and knees painting Black Lives Matter in front of the Benton Harbor High School in 2019 when you still could. I guess no 2020, I take that back. She was out in front with the women's suffrage thing celebration we did in 2019. Yeah, there, there's Gloria holding up this beautiful award that she got. I think she said it's one of her favorite awards. She has several. She's also done a ton of things for Buff. Um, not only the tapestries, um, which some of you haven't seen, as I said, but she helped remodel the kitchen. She helped do the filler fellowship hall remodeling, uh, taught RE, did childcare, all sorts of things. And she even helped construct that big orange sign that's out there. So, I guess I want to say I have joined <laughs> this community of good people um, where every week we affirm with that covenant to quote, dwell together in peace, seek the truth and love and help one another. And I think I'm continually learning lessons about that, how to be and stay in this community. So to the new people today, I want to say welcome I don't know if you each had a sign or two or three like I felt that I had, um, but for me, um, I had a sign that this is a place that I can really contribute and be. And as I said, orange is not my color. So if we ever do t-shirts, I don't know what I'm gonna do because it doesn't work for me. <laughs> but that big orange sign, it does show me that Buff is my place. Thank you. Thank you, Joan. Buff is your place, I think, mm -hmm. and uh, we're very, we celebrate you being here. I'd just like to add that the quilt behind me uh, was largely constructed of squares that most of you made uh, by uh, Gloria. So uh, uh, hopefully uh, when I get it done, I'm not quite done with it yet, uh, joining things together, but I will be returning it to Buff uh, and uh, hanging somewhere in the fellowship hall, I think. So thank you, Gloria, for that. And congratulations, Gloria, on your trophy. Thank you very um, much. And now let's, uh, let's move to our meditation music, which has an odd name, but uh, I'm sure it's quite beautiful. Let's see, let's hear uh, uh, Wickert's Polska. Here's a Swedish tune called Wickert's Polska. <laughs> Jim, may I just say one thing about that Polska? 
for those who don't know, which you are, are one of them, a Polska is a wonderful little Scandinavian dance music. And some of you saw Diane and my friend Nick who visited us, gosh, a couple of years ago and Nick did some music. So that's, that's Diane, uh, a friend who's contributing some things to us. Polska. Thank you, Joan. I thought I recognized Diane. Diane. Uh, let's now uh, turn to Joanne Critic, who has a very special message for us, for us on devotion. Joanne. And uh, thank you, Lisa and Joan, for your most beautiful moving talks. Um, I love hearing about our members and how wonderful they are. And to me, one of the greatest selling points of Buff is just our members and people I want to bring to Buff. I love to have them meet Buff members because I feel like that's the greatest selling point we have. Um, but I want to talk a little bit about devotion. That's been uh, somewhat of a topic throughout the month, beloved community. And in fact, we talked about devotion and commitment in our second service this month. Um, devotion is a word we don't often hear in the UU church. Uh, growing up in the Catholic church, mem I remember members would carry out devotions, which are rituals and worship practices in honor of God or the saints. And these can be multi-day prayers such as novenas, the veneration of saintly images, saying the prayers of the rosary or honoring the stations of the cross. And many Christian churches have devotionals, which often come in the form of a book or pamphlet with daily readings of Bible verses accompanied by a short essay or a prayer. And one will often read these and then reflect or meditate on them. Other faiths show devotion through fasting and prayer. Some go on a pilgrimage to a holy place. Others venerate holy objects. Many believe that the most sacred acts of devotion take place in secret, not to engender the admiration of others, but to express our love in private. Because the word devotion doesn't come up a lot in the UU church, Lisa Fuller and I were surprised to hear a fellow Unitarian Universalist using the word in a recent training session. The trainee introduced herself as a devout, or excuse me, a devoted member of her congregation, which struck both Lisa and me as rather touching. This led me to wonder, do we have devoted members in our fellowship as well? And if so, what does that mean? When we are passionately dedicated and loyal to someone or something, we call it devotion. Usually we, the devoted, spend significant time and energy focused on the object of our devotion. And devotion implies an emotional component, not just a rational commitment, but a love and attachment to something outside of ourselves. Our actions spring from the heart rather than from a sense of obligation or fear. In fact, we take great pleasure in our devotion. We give freely of ourselves. We sacrifice willingly. And often we experience joy and inspiration simply being in the presence of our object of devotion. In our beloved community, Buff, I see so many acts that I would view as nothing less than devotion to our principles and to one another. Um, for one, Lisa's evangelism. Um, I see buffers routinely sacrifice their own comfort and interest to care for others, to care for causes and people in our community. Um, and I'm just going to throw out some examples. And these are not at all comprehensive. I know I'm leaving people out, so please forgive me. Um, I see Jim Fuller, Charles Long, and Harvey Johnson repairing our leaking hot water heater without being asked or recognized. And that's a form of devotion. Diane and Beth cleaning the buff building before use by others is devotion. Dane and Tara clearing out an area of our grounds and hosting bonfires is an act of devotion. Joan collecting clothes for immigrant families. Clark, Nancy, and Catherine engaging buff in various social justice activities. Gloria sewing face masks for buffers and the decorative quilts for our sanctuary. Diane setting up an ethical eating group at buff and planning an ethical sack lunch for the soup kitchen and many buffers assisted with that project. Uh, Lisa, Beth and others running errands and delivering meals to buffers who are ill. The Green Sanctuary team so lovingly caring for our grounds and gardens. Buffers putting together song videos or chalice lighting videos. Buffers who sacrifice a weekly night out or a movie subscription so they can pledge gener generously and support our operations. Buffers who help assemble and deliver RE kits or member gift bags since the pandemic. The list goes on and on. When a new member joins this loving community, they become both a source of devotion and inspiration as well as a recipient. I read an article by Gail Brunner on devotion and I'd like to wrap up by sharing a quote from that article with you. Now, 
I realized that devotion isn't the impediment I once suspected. It is a superpower. It infuses life with love, connection, and meaning. Ask yourself, how can I be of service? Show your devotion through prayer, ritual, picking up trash on your hike, or not engaging in destructive or weakening behaviors like gossip, junk food, or toxic relationships. Remember, we will become devoted to one thing or another. Make it intentional. When we live with devotion to a force greater than ourselves, we not only add more harmony and ease to our lives, we also make the world a better place. Thank you. And I'm, Amen. Thank you, uh, Joanne, for that. And I have to just have to add that Joanne is one of our most devoted members. She is the one who uh, is uh, really the nerve center of communication. And she makes these beautiful bulletins and announces and also made the beautiful set of slides uh, for today's uh, in-gathering ceremony. So uh, thank you, Joanne, for your devotion and for that message. Let's, uh, let's move on and do Extinguish the Chalice again with Leah McCoskey and Zelda. I think we have one more song first. But let's do that one more song first. <laughs> thank you, Martin. Give and take Snow or sand, it's all the same from far away You and me We're the stuff of stars and dirt with eyes to see I can't meet you eye to eye But I can take your hand in mine We are better together We are the ocean tide The freedom and the anchor when we're together, we are better together. We are the day and night. Together we are stronger. We are stronger. A starry sky, solitary sparks that find a greater light. Desert land, sprawling miles and miles with only grains of sand. Oceans from drops of rain, everybody's made the same. We are better together, we are the ocean tide, freedom and the anchor. When we're together, we are better together, we are the day and night. Together we are stronger, we are stronger, we are better together. There is no real divide, the winter and the summer, we are stronger, all together. stronger together. And now Leah and Zelda will extinguish the chalice. Kindle new sparks. We have basked in the warmth and beauty of this flame in this community. As the chalice flame is extinguished, let us carry its glow within. Let us kindle new sparks within this community and beyond. You want to extinguish the chalice, Zelda?
All right. <laughs> <laughs> Very cute. Thank you, Zelda and Leah. And now our going in peace music. Peace, friends. Uh, but I'm hoping you won't go just yet. I'm hoping you'll stick around for our circle talk. And thank you to everyone who took part in today's service. It was it was outstanding. <laughs>